And just to finish off, just some, some drills that you can think about to do with them. I do a lot of mirror work with them, which is just that agility. So partnering up and going up and down the line for the line out work. Um, one on one, just chasing each other. Um, it's just footwork um, and it's reactions as well. So it's really good for the line out work. Um, static catching, which is just catching above the head. You know, most guys are pretty comfortable in this zone, but it's a whole other skill to catch above your head. You know, the AFL guys are really good at it. With, um, and I think, you know, rugby players in general are getting better at it, but it's certainly an area for the locks to focus on. Distraction catching, there's just a variation on the above. So putting them in pairs, having one guy's the nominated catcher, one guy's the defender, and they're just really challenging each other to stay focused on the ball and catch it under pressure. But you know, any locks I work with, I get get them to do a lot of that as part of their warm up. You know, it's just good habits to get into, and often that part of the game gets sort of put on the back burner. But it's it's really crucial for them. Um, kick off pod work again, the aerial part of the game. It's just repetition. They've got to they've got to do it, okay? Because we do an awful lot of work on scrums, lineouts, general play, patterns of play. But kick offs as coaches, I think it's important to make time to do it and to allow or we'll put aside time for the locks to actually improve in that area. We mentioned the clean out before. We generally do it as a team, but again, give these big guys real focus points around their body height and targets to hit and getting their leg drive through rather than down. And it's the same with the defense. You know, we generally do that in the team, so we're in the system, but with the locks, just give them good key targets to hit. Focus on their body height getting low, their agility into contact, their alignment, all those things, because they will need a bit of extra help with it more than likely unless they're really superb athletes. So. Again, it just it's a repetition thing. You know, it's one of those fine motor skills like so just some drills where he's just practicing and you've got to, you know, as a coach you just work with him, you know, five, ten minutes at the start um, of training or at the end of training. Just getting him really focusing on being explosive. Um, there, there's no magic bullet for it, there's no magic drills. It's repetition and practice and training. So it becomes a habit, because um, he's sort of in the habit of just big strides and slow movements, whereas you get him the habit of shorter strides, faster movements, it'll become more natural to him. Does it look a bit like the profiling of locks, like for instance with the South Africans, they become quite a thing when they pick now, they say we've got a bigger buckies and a bigger, that sort of even at schools and stuff, you're always looking for a bucket, a bucket and a vector combination. Do you look at that or can it be the two, doesn't really matter? Yeah, we've been through that and you know, we, as I said, we had Brad Thorne who was our buckies yeah. and you know, Sam Whitelock who was yeah. the victor. So that combination worked really well. The, the buckies is the, normally the, behind the tight head and he's strong and he's powerful, he's yeah. a good ball carrier. Whereas the other guy is the line out expert, yeah. controls the air. So it is a good combination. But like I said, the, the current All Black duo are both evenly matched. Yeah. Um, with similar attributes, and that works well as well. Um, yeah, I don't think you have to, but uh, you know, sometimes you don't have the luxury yeah. of picking from a, a, a huge pool of talent. So you look at what you've got and put them in their best positions. So generally, you have your stronger guy as the tight head lock, and he's normally the heavier guy, so he's normally at the front of the lineup. Um, the more athletic guy is generally in the middle. He's got a bit more movement, um, and he's your, your key aerial guy. But it is a common system in New Zealand. Yeah, it's pretty common. So even even spacings, yeah. and then they can move. And trying to think as of every player apart from the props as jumping Just options it takes a bit of timing, um, but you know it can be very effective. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it depends on the makeup of your of your squad, the ability on of them to move. If you only have one or two good jumpers, then it might be better to work in pods and have them moving. You know, but if you have five guys who are all good jumpers, you can spread the defence and it's really hard to mark all five of them. Everyone should be able to lift, jump and catch, ideally. But every now and again you'll get a, a heavy, you know, like a, a Tonga number eight who's not so good in the air, not very confident. He might be 130 kilos, a great ball carrier, but he can't jump the line out, so you just have to mix with whatever your combination is.